Good morning and welcome to Thursday morning prayer and devotion. The Apostle Paul told us in the book of Colossians to continue in prayer and to watch in the same with thanksgiving. And so this morning as we come together to continue what we've been doing for the past several weeks, we are in the will of God, amen, to continue in prayer, to watch in our prayer, and to come before God in an attitude of thanksgiving. And it is with thankful hearts today as we reflect on the things that God has done and the things that we know that he is doing that we can come today before the throne of grace and come with great boldness, amen, trusting in our God to hear and answer our prayers. Amen. And you know, Jesus said in all things, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. And so we come today in faith. Good to see all of you beginning to sign on here this morning to join us for prayer. And we have a praise report this morning from Sister Mariah Jordan. Um, we had prayer yesterday for a few needs in their lives. And uh, one of those needs was... Uh, the purchase of a home and they have the house they've been praying about under contract and also today she goes for an interview for her first nursing job after just completing uh, nursing school and so we celebrate that good report with Mariah and Owen this morning. We have many many prayer requests today and we want to get right to it and, um, and then I'm going to share with you uh, some more uh, personal experiences that I've had as far as in uh, the realm of miracles. And uh, I pray that that will be a blessing to you this morning. Karen Pratt is believing for Roxanne Carson to have a cancer-free report. And we join with her today and unite in prayer uh, for that need, for that cause. Others who are battling cancer, Jamie Dixon, uh, Caden, and Lorelei, two children who are battling Cancer and Leukemia, uh, Brother Steve Williford, Diane Escher, Michael Boland, Delbert Bryant, and my cousin Pam Bunch. Her father-in-law is also battling cancer. Josh Rogers is asking for prayer for his wife, Amanda. She has been very sick the last few days, so we want to hold her up in prayer this morning. Bonnie Pulaski has an unspoken request for her and her husband, Butch. Tasha asked that we remember a young lady she works with who had an emergency C-section and unfortunately the baby did not survive. So that is a very traumatic experience and we want to pray for that family today. Uh, Matt and Michaela, we want to continue praying for their emotional healing as they uh, went through a recent miscarriage and believe with them for a healthy pregnancy in the future. Benita Copeland is in the hospital with fluid, fluid buildup on her lungs. We want to pray for Benita today and continue to remember the families of Rick Morgan, Kenny Pullum, and Eli Hernandez, that they would be comforted in their loss today. Let's continue to cover Mariah in prayer today as she interviews for that nursing position. And uh, as I said, she has just completed her nursing degree and she is really seeking the Lord's will for her career. I so appreciate people who uh, take into consideration uh, their role in the kingdom of God. The word of God tells us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto us. And this young couple, uh, they truly are seeking the Lord's will. They don't want anything that would keep them out of church services unnecessarily and they're such a vital part of what we're doing here at Greater Vision and working um, alongside Reagan with the youth and directing the youth praise team, and we're so thankful for them. Uh, Mariah's grandmother has a cyst behind her eye that we're praying about, so let's continue praying that, that for that today, and let's pray for Bethany Hughes for the Lord to guide her decisions. We need to remember Ben and Star Ramey as they continue to navigate through this situation with their home that was damaged and damaged most likely beyond repair when this recent storm we had here toppled a large tree onto their house and uh, caused extensive structural damage. So let's pray that 
um, they'll be able to get through that situation and, um, and get some temporary housing in place so that they can move out of their little camper and, um, and have something that's more amenable to daily life. You know, camping is fun until you have to camp, and then it's not fun anymore. So let's pray for Star and Ben today. Job situation we're praying about, Mark and Jenny Perkins seeking God's will in uh, the next phase of their employment and how that's going to be structured. Uh, Jonathan Tucker and Beth Riggins are praying for both of their job situations. We want to continue to pray for uh, Elder uh, Brother and Sister Perkins for their healing, for their encouragement. Um, Carmen's sister Tracy has been in extreme pain from MS. So let's remember her today and let's continue to pray for Adam Lane, who has been suffering from C. diff infection, pancreatitis. He's been on dialysis, he's been on a respirator, and was recently transferred to a, a higher level of care in St. Louis. So let's continue to remember him and also his mother and the rest of his family today. Um, Pam Bunch's mother needs healing of stomach issues. Nick Searcy and Brandy Bryant were still believing for their recovery from stroke, uh, believing for recovery from coronavirus for Pastor Gary Ratliff's daughter, for missionary Judy McCarthy's mother, father, and sister, for James and Irma Campbell, and for uh, Rue, who is a gentleman that Carmen knows uh, he's suffering from coronavirus complications and was admitted to the hospital with sepsis after having initially been discharged. So let's continue to remember him today. Let's continue to pray for all things associated with this pandemic, uh, for economic recovery. Uh, we want to pray for those especially who are struggling with mental health disorders. Um, during this time, those things have been greatly exacerbated by the pandemic. We want to pray for those who are unemployed and just for all the additional stressors that are put up on families and individuals during this time. I believe that God's hand is in all this. I believe that God is present in time of trouble, and uh, we just want to see people turn to him and not turn to alcohol and drugs and uh, other things to fill that void and to, and to um, cope with the stresses of life. Amen. Jesus Christ is the answer. Amen. Gerald Yeely, recovery after brain surgery. We continue to pray for him. Shirley Streeter's brother-in-law, suffering with blood clots, kidney problems, and is in need of salvation today. Uh, my father and mother-in-law, that's Ron Bryant and Beulah Ziegler, uh, need healing from Parkinson's. Uh, Renee is suffering today with extreme pain and difficulty walking, and she's needing surgery. Uh, Terry needs a liver transplant desperately and, and a hip replacement as well. Louise Horn has a blood disorder that we're praying against. Um, we're believing for a good report for James Pearson regarding his blood pressure. Uh, Brother Arnold's mother, Brenda, stage four kidney failure. So many things to pray about, and I think that among these things, uh, chief today should be that we pray for revival in every community. You know, the Great Commission is to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, amen, to teach all nations. And the key to worldwide revival, we sometimes forget, is to have revival in our own communities. Our commission to reach the whole world with the gospel, um, we must understand that the world begins right outside our own front door. And so we need to pray for those who we already know all around us who need divine intervention in their lives. And we have several in our own families, in our close connections that we've been praying for revival in their lives, for their spiritual needs, many of them for salvation, uh, backsliders. And we're going to call their names before the Lord once again this morning. And they include Randy, Bobby, Jenny, and Joe. These are Pam Pulliam's children, Beulah Ziegler's son, Frank, and, and his children, uh, have need today in their home. Uh, we want to continue to pray for Beulah's granddaughter, Amber, for Carmen's daughter, Grace, needing continued prayer today, uh, Terry Jean and Michael Mizell, uh, Josh and Zach Moore, uh, Debbie Biddick's daughter, Jamie, is having family issues, 
Um, and Debbie also requests prayer for Art and for their daughter Olivia, that God would bring love, direction, and for his will to be done in their relationship. We want to continue to remember Sarah Mercer's sons today and Tasha's sister and husband, both backsliders who she's praying for, that they would return to God. We want to continue to pray for the Yandel family. You know, um, there's a great revival just right there, and every person has their own sphere of influence. And so when you reach one person, and when you uh, reach one person with the message of salvation, or you, you have someone that you know that's struggling, and you assist them and get them back on their feet spiritually, then you're opening up a whole new area of witness. You're opening up opportunities to win the world, literally, amen, one soul at a time, amen. And we believe that we're going to receive the things that we ask for today. I welcome you this morning. Uh, Jennifer, good to have you with us this morning. Judy and Michael, we thank God for you today. I see a last-minute request here. Uh, please pray for Grayson Fields. He's only two, and he needs his tonsils removed. That's their great-grandbaby. Um, so let's remember Grayson this morning. Um, we welcome Sister Beulah and Mariah and Pam and Russell. Good to see you with us this morning. Uh, Brenda, uh, Mike Hodge, um, Brother Pulliam, looking forward to uh, hearing his great teaching tonight. Uh, we have such good uh, ministers in our church who are committed to truth and are passionate about the Word of God. And I'm looking forward to that Bible lesson tonight. And I thank God for each and every one of you and for your dedication to the ministry of prayer. I've been sharing with you um, some stories of the miraculous, true stories, things that I didn't hear about somewhere, but things that I have seen with my own eyes or I've experienced for myself that um, have proven to me uh, and I know the word of God is proof enough, but, uh, but we need our own miracles and we need to understand for ourselves that God is moving in the affairs of, of men and women today, that miracles are not something that just happened in the Bible, but they're still happening today. And if I can understand uh, that a miracle happened for you, if you can hear my testimony, then it increases our faith because we know that God doesn't play favorites and he's no respecter of persons, but what he will do for one, uh, he loves us all the same, and he will move for another as well. So I've shared with you several miracles, and I have three more to tell you about. Hopefully I can get through these today. Um, one uh, is something that happened um, for myself. Uh, this is, I told you a story of a miracle that happened to me when I was seven years old, but now we fast forward to uh, the time here, even pastoring at Greater Vision in the early years of pastoring, uh, I had had problems with my ears for many, many years. As a child, I had problems. I had several sets of tubes put in my ears, um, just lots of infections and drainage and that kind of stuff that a lot of kids go through. And after about the third set of uh, tubes that were put in my ears, um, one of those tubes never fell out and was somehow missed and it was years later that I lost 70% of my hearing in my left ear and went to uh, a specialist and when he began to examine uh, he began to ask who had done this last surgery and um, and he informed us that there was a tube that had not been removed from my ear had never fallen out and the doctor had not removed um, that had stayed there all those years and had caused a hole to form in my eardrum. So I had to end up having a, a tragal cartilage graft to repair my eardrum, and thankfully that restored my hearing. But um, um, I still had some problems off and on with that left ear. And when we began pastoring, uh, even while we were still at Greenville, I was noticing a fullness in my left ear and this continued and got worse over the next uh, year and a half or two. And, and we were pastoring here in Greater Vision, had started the church. And uh, it just felt like my ear was almost like a foreign object on the side of my head. And, and, um, and just a fullness that was there at all times. And so finally, I went 
back to the specialist and he informed me that there was a cholesteatoma formation in my ear that had begun to grow there uh, next to my eardrum or on the eardrum. And so he said this will probably go away with antibiotics, it'll begin to shrink. And so he put me on a round of antibiotics and there was no change, went back and, and he said it's still there, it's, in fact it's getting larger. He put me on a second round of antibiotics and there was still no change. So when I went back to him again with no change after two rounds of antibiotics, he said, I'll put you on one more round of continue the antibiotics for one more round. He said, but if there is no improvement, he said, we're going to have to biopsy this. I'm concerned. And he said the C word, I'm concerned that this could be cancerous. And you can imagine uh, the shock that I felt from that because, uh, you know, your ear is uh, there's a very small barrier between your inner ear and your brain. And that's, Frankly, that scared me to death. And uh, we had been praying, you know, for it uh, in the sense of, you know, give the doctor wisdom to know what antibiotic to use. And sometimes the way we approach prayer. But now I realize I need a miracle. And I went to church that very night for our midweek service. And um, I asked for prayer. And my father anointed me with oil and prayed for me, the other ministers that were there. And there was no change in that moment. I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel that there was a change. But after the service, there was a couple that had come to visit the service that night. They were interested in attending our church, and they wanted to kind of get a little tour of the building and see where the Sunday school classrooms were and that kind of thing. And I was conversing with them and walking through the building and showing them this and that. And all of a sudden, as I was talking, I felt um, my ear pop just a popping sound and for just a moment I could hear clearly because understand with this fullness also my hearing was drastically reduced uh, by that cholesteatoma formation or cancerous formation whatever that was and in that moment I just said and I didn't even realize it, that I was confessing this and the Bible says the word of faith is nigh to us it's even in our heart and we just need to speak it out and in that moment I just said I think my ears opening up and it closed back just as tight as before. And I kind of did my jaw like this and, and I heard it pop a couple more times and then it opened up just as beautifully uh, as, as you could imagine. And of course, after a year and a half or two of that situation, uh, it felt good and it never closed back up again. God worked a miracle in that moment. And I want to tell you today that when we pray, sometimes you may not feel a difference. But at any moment, it can be manifest a miracle that God is working in your body, that God is working in your life, and you need to continue to believe. And whenever you see any progress, you need to confess that and thank God for it. And God healed me miraculously. Sister Jennifer Jones, who's on here today, several years ago, uh, she was having excruciating abdominal pain that would just double her over all of a sudden, went to the doctor and they did the CT scan of the ultrasound, what do they do? And they told her that on the, on the films that her gallbladder was just filled with stones and she did not have insurance. Uh, they, didn't, they could not afford the surgery. They wanted to schedule her for surgery right away. She came to church again, just on a midweek service and I walked in on the conversation as I came into the Sunday school building after the service. And um, one of the ladies that was there, a great woman of faith, uh, she was very animatedly instructing Jennifer on what she should do. And I, I would tell you in the moment, I thought, well, that sounds kind of radical, but, but um, you know, it won't hurt anything. But she told her, she said, whenever you feel that pain, she said, you take your Bible and you lay it on your stomach. And you begin to quote scriptures uh, about healing and read scriptures about healing and um, believe God to heal you. And so sure enough, she went home that very night and she did that. And when she laid the Bible on her stomach, amen, God healed her. And she, to this day, she never has had to have gallbladder surgery. Um, the, the last story I want to tell you, and I, I know I'm going to run out of time here. Uh, but just a, a visible miracle that everyone there was totally amazed. Uh, my sister 
had been, uh, she worked for a company where she did uh, phone calls all day long. She had to talk on the phone. And she lost her voice. It appeared to be just a simple case of laryngitis. But then this stretched on for eight weeks. It came to the point that she was even uh, uh, at risk of losing her job or may have already been laid off because she just couldn't do the main duties of her job. She had been to uh, the doctor. She had been to, I believe, one specialist. They were now getting ready to send her to another specialist. And she had never gotten relief from this. And she could not talk above a whisper. And she just sounded just terrible. Any sound she tried to make, it just barely would come out. And this went on for eight weeks. And, um, and so she was scheduled to go see yet another specialist, if I remember the story right. And we were in the middle of an altar service. And unbeknownst to either party, uh, God had told two people. One was my sister. Um, he had told her that if she would go and pick up the microphone and begin to sing, that he would heal her. God told her that. And she felt foolish because she knew she couldn't sing and with that voice, so she didn't do it. In the very same service, God had spoken to another lady, which is, she's on here today. I just mentioned her healing and, um, and said, instructed her to go. She just felt impressed in the spirit to go and lay hands on her throat and pray for her and that God would heal her. And she also did not do it because she felt like that would be very uh, radical or people would think that she was weird or whatever when they saw her do that. And uh, indeed, when it did happen, uh, it looked at first like she was going to strangle her. When she put her hands around her throat, you were like, what in the world is she doing? But she was going to pray for her. So the second week, uh, understand, God had already spoken a word to both these people, and they, they didn't do anything with it. But the second week, the power of God moved in, to the altar service once again, and they both felt that same impression. And so Sister Jennifer went, laid her hands on her throat, and prayed for her in Jesus' name. That was the confirmation to my sister that what she was feeling and what God was speaking to her was indeed God and not just her wishful thinking. And here I am up there playing the keyboard, and I'm singing in the altar service. And um, all of a sudden, I see my sister. She bolts to the platform and grabs the microphone, and literally begins croaking in the mic. That's that's exactly what it was. It was just a croak, and I turned myself up, you know, <laughs> and um, I felt sorry for. Her. I thought, oh my, this is. I know this is embarrassing. I didn't know that God had spoken to anybody, and uh, I was just singing in the altar service, and she croaked through that one time, and we went into the course again. And here she was croaking right along. And with God and every person in that building as my witness, uh, and both Star and Jennifer on here this morning that were part of this, in the very middle of that course, all of a sudden, her voice was instantly healed and came back just as clear and beautiful um, as could be. And she completed singing that song. And I remember standing there in the altar after church conversing with her. She testified of what had happened and how that it had happened. And it just sounded so strange to hear her voice as God healed her instantly. Amen. So we have our own miracles that we've experienced. So when I come today and I pray for these needs, I know that at any moment that God could reach down and the miracle could be made manifest for everyone to witness. And what a powerful witness that it is. And what a witness that was because every person that knew her, every person on her job, they knew that the day before that she had no voice and she began to witness to them and tell them what God had done. And it was a catapult situation for her faith and, um, and for her uh, next step in her own spiritual walk. Amen. Because of that miracle. So what is God going to do today? We bring these needs to God every day. Many of them, the same needs. And, and as I said, two years that we were praying for uh, the situation with my ear. Eight weeks prayer was going up for Star. Amen. But God is going to move, and we need to believe that he's going to move and that we're going to see our miracles come to pass. Why don't you go to the Lord with you right now in thanksgiving and praise, amen, for what he alone can do. And let's worship him as God. Let's worship him for who he is. And let's give him praise and thanks for what he's done in our lives. I know many of you have your own miracle stories. And I, I, it would be great if you would just 
share those in the comments and let others benefit from them after we finish this prayer today. Amen. Share this with someone. Let's spread the word that our God is a miracle working God and he is the same. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus and we thank you for every miracle that we've experienced. Lord, no one can take those experiences away from us. No one can convince us otherwise, Lord, because we've already experienced your miracle working power. And so we give you praise this morning for all that you've done in our past, for all that you're doing right now, and for all that you are going to do, Lord. Hallelujah. You hold us in the palm of your hand, and you know exactly what your children need today. And it's your good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Hallelujah. You're not going to give us a stone when we ask you for bread, God. You're not going to give us a snake or a scorpion, Lord, in place of what we need today. You're a good father, and we trust you with our needs today. And we worship you, Lord. You are the holy and the righteous God. You're the king over all the earth, and there's nothing that's too hard for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We trust in you for our needs this morning, oh God. And we pray today for Roxanne. We believe, Lord, today for a cancer-free report in the name of Jesus. We pray against cancer that is ravaging the bodies of so many people here today. Jamie Dixon and Caden and Lorelei, we lay them before your throne today, God. And we know that you're able to heal us of cancer. God, I know that you healed me, Lord, of something that was on the verge of that diagnosis. That was the next thing they were moving to. But God, you healed me miraculously. I thank you, God, for touching Brother Williford today. In Jesus' name, we believe you for his healing, for Diane Escher, and for Michael Boland, and for Delbert Bryant, and for Pam's father-in-law. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive your healing right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Receive your healing right now. If you know these people today, I want you to share this video with them. And I want them to be able to hear that prayer. And I want them to be able to seize faith and believe with us that God has healed them. Amen. When you watch this video, believe that you're healed in Jesus' name. We pray for Amanda today. Lord, that you would touch her body. Minister healing to her, we pray. In your tender mercy, God, touch her right now. We pray for Bonnie, Lord, and for her husband today. Lord, whatever their need is, we pray that you would move on their behalf. We pray for this young lady that Tasha works with, Lord, who just had this C-section and lost the baby. God, we pray, Lord, that you would comfort that family. Lord, that you would minister your supernatural comfort to them right now. Your peace that passes all understanding, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We pray for Michaela and Matt, Lord. Lord, that their emotional healing would be complete. God, that they would recover from this, um, Lord, emotionally and mentally. And God, have the courage, Lord, to try again and believe for a healthy pregnancy in the future. In Jesus' name, we pray for Benita right now in the hospital. Lord, that that fluid would begin to move off of her lungs right now. In Jesus' name, we thank you, God. We pray for your comfort and peace for the Morgan and Pullum and Hernandez families this morning, Lord, as they grieve their loss of their loved one today. Lord, be with them, God. Cover them, Lord, today with your presence. In Jesus' name, we pray for Mariah, Lord, that her interview would go well today, that you would give her direction, Lord, on whether or not to accept that position. In Jesus' name, give her favor, we pray. Hallelujah. She seeks your will. We pray for her grandmother this morning, Lord, that that cyst behind her eye would dissolve right now in the name of Jesus, by the authority of the word of God, by the power of the name of Jesus. We declare it right now. Hallelujah. We declare healing in Jesus' name. We pray for Bethany, Lord, that you would guide her decision-making today. Lead her, Lord, by your spirit we pray for Ben and Star, Lord, that you would work in their insurance situation, in the situation with their home right now. Let everything come together, that their needs will be met today. In Jesus' name, we pray for every job situation. Lord, for Mark and Jenny and for Jonathan and for Beth, that you would move in their job situations, Lord. 
work miracles for them, Lord, that they can do your will in their own lives. In Jesus' name, we pray for every person whose job has been affected by this pandemic, Lord. We pray, God, their jobs would be restored. Or if they're not restored to their original job, that they would have a better opportunity, Lord, than they had before. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We pray, Lord, for Brother and Sister Perkins today. We pray for your healing touch upon them. We speak a word of encouragement today, Lord, that you are with them, that you will never leave or forsake them, O oh God. Hallelujah. Help them to trust you today. We pray for Tracy right now. Lord, we rebuke that pain that's in her body. We speak healing into her body, God. Hallelujah. We speak against MS today in the name of Jesus Christ. And we declare healing for her right now. We declare healing for Adam right now, God. We pray against that infection in his body, against the pancreatitis that he's suffering with right now. Hallelujah. Let his kidneys begin to function properly. In Jesus' name, strengthen his family, God. In Jesus' name, and help them through this time. Oh, God, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are our healer, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord, for Evelyn Marshall right now. We rebuke those stomach problems in Jesus' name. Be made whole right now in the name of Jesus. We pray for Nick and Brandy. Be healed today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let every neurological response uh, be restored right now. Hallelujah. They can control their limbs uh, and that every muscle would respond right now to the command of the brain. In Jesus' name, we pray for recovery from coronavirus, Lord, for all those that are affected today. Hallelujah. We pray for Gary Ratliff's daughter, Lord, for Judy McCarthy's family members today, for James and Irma for rude today, God, that you would touch his body. In Jesus' name, we rebuke that septic condition. Hallelujah. We believe you for healing for all of these this morning. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We pray for those who are struggling with mental health issues right now. Oh, God, help them to turn to you, Lord, in their time of need. Let there be clarity in their mind today. Hallelujah. Let your spirit of peace, God, invade that struggle right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We pray for Gerald Healy today, God, for complete recovery. We believe you for it today in Jesus' name. We pray for Shirley's brother-in-law. We pray that those blood clots would dissolve, that his kidney problems would resolve. And Lord, that he would receive your salvation today. In Jesus' name, I rebuke Parkinson's disease. These prayer warriors agree with me together against Parkinson's right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we know, God, that you are our healer. You took stripes upon your back, Lord Jesus, that we could receive our healing. It came at a high price, Lord, and we're going to take advantage of it today and believe you, God, for our own miracles. In Jesus' name, we believe you, Lord, on behalf of Renee, God, that a pain would leave her body right now, that she would be able to walk like she wants to walk. In Jesus' name, we pray, Lord, for Terry, God. He needs a liver transplant or he needs a miracle healing right now. Oh, God, touch him in Jesus' name. Touch his hips today, God. In Jesus' name, we pray for Louise, God. We pray for her blood right now, that her blood would be made whole. We pray for James Pearson. We believe for a good report today in regards to his blood pressure. We pray for Brother George Arnold's mother, Lord. God, that her kidneys would be restored to full function. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we believe you, Lord. Hallelujah. We believe you, Lord, that we will receive these things. Hallelujah. When you hear the reports uh, of healings and miracles, please let us know, amen, what God is doing. We have confidence today that God is working in these situations. Let's pray right now for revival in every community, that we might reach our entire world, one community at a time, one soul at a time, one family at a time. 
In Jesus' name, let revival come to our communities. Let truth be preached in every pulpit. Let divine healing be preached. Let the power of the name of Jesus be preached. Let there be a revelation of the power of the name of Jesus to sweep across the, every denomination. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray it. Let eyes be open, Lord, that people would understand that you're not just a historical Jesus, but Lord, you are the mighty God. Hallelujah. Revealed to us in human flesh. Hallelujah. Living in our hearts today in the form of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you that we know you, God, and that this truth is being revealed to everyone today that we're praying for. We pray for Randy and Bobby. We pray for Jenny and Joe. We pray for Frank and for his children today. We pray for Amber. We lift up grace before your throne today. We pray for Terry Jean and for Michael. We pray for Josh and Zach, Lord. We pray for Debbie's daughter, Jamie, for her family issues. We pray for Art and for their daughter, Olivia. Lord, that your will would be done in that home and that family. Lord, that your love and your direction would be there, that your will would be done. In Jesus' name, we pray for Sarah Mercer's sons right now. God, we're going to reach the world one soul at a time as backsliders are restored, as people in our families that are lost are one to you, as those who are struggling spiritually are uplifted and are back on their feet again to minister to someone else. We pray for Tasha's sister and husband. We pray for these backsliders today. We pray for these who are struggling, Lord, that they will return to you. We pray, God, that those who have once had an experience with you, God, that their hurts would be healed. Hallelujah. Their backslidings would be healed, and they would be back in the army of the Lord. Hallelujah. Fighting this battle of faith with us. We pray for the Yandel family. We believe you for continued revival among that family today. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, grant revival in every home, in every family, in every community, in every city, Lord, in every state of our nation. Hallelujah. In every country in our world. In Jesus' name, we pray these things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you today for joining me in prayer once again. I look forward to praying with you tomorrow morning. Please share this video. Start a watch party. I see that many of you do this every single day. Let's spread the word today. Let's allow others into this powerful atmosphere of prayer. And who knows what the Lord is doing, amen, that we have no knowledge of today. We have a knowledge of our personal situation, but we don't know every person that watches this video every day. Amen. Let's continue to be faithful to prayer. We'll be back here tomorrow morning at 730 for our last prayer session, unbelievably, of this week. And uh, pray for me throughout this day that God would give me the word that we need going into the weekend. And we'll believe God for great things together. God bless you in Jesus' name.